Hello everyone, this is Michael from Western Reserve Independent Living Center coming to you with our March 2021 newsletter. WRILC's Independent Living Newsletter, Issue 21-3, March 2021. Western Reserve Independent Living Center, Opening Doors to Independence. In this issue, 1. SSI slash SSDI Ensure your continuing eligibility. 2. Free workshop. Achieve your goals. 3. Healthy living. Be happy again. 4. Recipe. Just use what you have. 5. News and resources in brief. 6. Transportation. Change to Warren's 72 Southwest Route, coming March 1st. 7. Calendar Items for March 1. SSI-SSDI Ensure your continuing eligibility. Courtesy of SSI-SSDI Outreach, Access, and Recovery Center. Form SSA-455, the Disability Update Report, is a form that collects information about your medical conditions, recent treatments for those conditions, recent education or training, and recent attempts to return to work. By law, Social Security is required to conduct continuing eligibility reviews for people receiving SSI or SSDI benefits for disability or blindness. These reviews are called Continuing Disability Reviews. CDR. These reviews are required at least every three years, except when a disability is found to be permanent. Recent means within the last two years. Completion and processing of the disability update report is not a CDR. It is a process to determine if a full medical CDR is going to be needed. The disability update report is sent to people who Social Security determined to have a low probability of their disability improving when the full CDR was done. In some cases, the Disability Update Report is also sent to people who Social Security determines have a medium or high probability of improving. When the form is completed and returned, Social Security reviews the information you provided, including attachments such as medical evidence and work information. Then, there are two possible outcomes that can occur. One outcome is that the individual is referred for a full medical CDR, and the other outcome is that the person is determined to not need a full medical CDR and instead is set up for a re-examination date sometime in the future. Typically, that re-examination will be in one to seven years. It is important to complete Form SSA-455, the Disability Update Report, thoroughly and return it promptly. You can avoid the unneeded stress and anxiety of having a full medical CDR by completing and returning this form as soon as possible after you get it. Social Security will make several attempts to ask you to complete the form. If you do not do so in time, a full medical CDR will be initiated by Social Security. If you receive this form and need help understanding or completing it, you can call us at Western Reserve ILC for assistance. Here are the questions asked on the form. Question 1. Since beginning of report period, have you worked or been self-employed? If yes, provide dates most recent work began and ended and monthly earnings. Question 2. Have you attempted any school or training programs since beginning of report period? Yes or no? Question 3. 
since beginning of report period, have you and your doctor discussed whether you can work? And if so, what did the doctor tell you? Yes or no? Question 4. Place an X in only one box. Better, same, or worse, which best describes your health now as compared to beginning of report period? Question 5. Have you gone to a doctor or clinic for treatment since beginning of report period? If yes, list reasons for most recent visits and month slash year of these visits. Question 6. Have you been hospitalized or had surgery since beginning of report period? If yes, list reasons for most recent hospitalizations or surgeries and month slash year of these. Submitting the form. If you get SSI or SSDI, you will be mailed the disability update report and it must be completed and returned to the address on the reply envelope that is provided. Remarks. Space you can use to further answer questions 1 through 6. 2. Free workshop. Achieve your goals. Join us live on Fridays at 1 p.m. to learn how to change habits and achieve your 2021 goals. Living Well in the Community is a health and well-being workshop for people who want to set goals to support their quality of life and well-being. WRILC will present the workshop on Google Meet. You can learn about how to choose and set quality of life goals, problem-solving skills and managing emotions, improving health by changing daily habits, practicing self-advocacy. Join Rilk hosts for this peer support program. Captioning is available as well as telephone-only participation. March 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th, 1 to 2.30 p.m. Join with Google Meet, meet.google.com forward slash cwf dash zjns dash dto. Join by phone, 269-804-3900. Two three four zero one eight three six two, followed by a pound. Three, healthy living. Be happy again. When you're looking at your own life, maybe you're thinking about how time has gone by so quickly, and you have no idea how you got to where you're at. You might feel sad because you've drifted so far from where you wanted to be at your age. Life was difficult, so you settled and accepted that this is just how life is. You've given up, and your goal now is to just get by. However, it doesn't have to be this way. Cultivating happiness in your life is a very real and close possibility. You just have to put in a little work. Here are five proven ways to shake off your sadness and feel happy again. 1. Do what brings you meaning. We've all been there. A feeling of boredom and being stuck in our lives without knowing what to do. We find it easier to turn on the television and let the day go by. What you can do Work on a project that demands your skills and abilities. Look for something that will help someone in need. 2. Eliminate options to get clear on what you want. Too many choices are overwhelming and lead us to sometimes refrain from making a decision. What you can do? 
Start with aspects in life that need your attention most and narrow it down to a few. Make important decisions earlier in the day when your mind is fresh. If you have to make an important decision, but you're hungry, eat first. 3. Help yourself by helping others. The happiest people are ones who make a positive impact on others. Scientific data supports the theory that giving is a powerful way to lasting happiness. Everyone has something they can contribute to the world. What can you do? Intentionally begin giving to something or someone in your life. 4. Get out of your comfort zone. Chances are you are unhappy because of your routine. You're bored, but at the same time, maybe you're afraid to try something new. Scientists have found evidence that if a person steps out of their comfort zone enough, then they can increase happiness-inspiring endorphins in their brain. What you can do? Create experiences that you can't back out of. Think of a goal you've always wanted to accomplish. Then make an appointment that you have to follow through with. Neuroscience has shown that new experiences can build new neural pathways in the brain. Even if you're just visiting a nearby city or a new local restaurant, experiencing new things can pull you out of the dumps. 5. Change your attitude to gratitude. The Journal of Happiness published a study of 219 men and women. Participants were asked to write three letters of gratitude over a three-week period. The results? Writing letters of gratitude increased participants' happiness and life satisfaction while decreasing depressive symptoms. Your brain cannot focus on both positive and negative things at the same time. So practicing gratitude can help you shift your focus from being sad about the things you don't have in your life to being glad for the things you do have. When you engage in the act of being thankful, production of dopamine and serotonin in the brain increases, which is similar to how an antidepressant works. Think of gratitude as a kind of natural antidepressant. What you can do? Write down three things you are grateful for each day. Regularly write and send a thank you note to someone you appreciate. Mention things you are thankful for in daily conversations instead of focusing on negatives. Here's to finding your happy place. 4. Recipe. Just use what you have. By Marianne Wilson. Recipe courtesy of The Wolf Pit on YouTube. This simple to make Use What You Have recipe is from my favorite YouTube recipe content creator, The Wolf Pit. He shares a whole series of videos for recipes that can help you feed your family for under $10. The gentleman behind The Wolf Pit shares from his years of experience growing up poor, as well as years as a single parent having to feed a family with very little cash. Mr. Wolf also is a person with a disability who uses a wheelchair, so I just wanted to feature him as a person with a disability doing great things for others. He does not share his real-life name other than the surname Wolf. 
but he often talks about raising his daughter alone and about the partner he found later in life, whom he lovingly refers to as Mrs. Wolf Pit. This recipe for vegetable, beef, and noodle soup can feed four to six people for $8.60. I checked the ingredient prices at Walmart online to come up with prices and the total. I can also vouch for it being delicious. If you have access to YouTube, you may want to check out his other recipes. Just search for Wolf, W-O-L-F-E space pit on YouTube or Google search. Vegetable, beef, and noodle soup recipe. Ingredients. One pound of 80 over 20 ground chuck, $3.94. One 16-ounce bag of egg noodles, $1.16. One 32-ounce box of beef broth, $1.68. One 15-ounce can of diced tomatoes, $0.98. Cents. One 12-ounce bag of frozen mixed vegetables, $0.84. Cents. Season according to your taste or what you've got in your cupboard. Add a tablespoon of some or all of these. Dried onion, granulated garlic, black pepper, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, dried parsley, paprika, or even hot sauce. Directions 1. Brown ground beef in a large pot over medium-high heat. Break it up as it browns. 2. Drain most of excess fat, but not all. 3. Add beef broth. 4. Add can of diced tomatoes. 5. Add the seasonings. 6. Mix well. 7. Add frozen mixed veggies. 8. Reduce heat to medium-low and cover and simmer for 10 minutes. 9. Add egg noodles plus 2 cups of water or broth for the noodles. Cook until noodles are soft, about 10 minutes, or according to noodle package instructions. 5. News and resources in brief. Scam alert. Fake OHS calls. The Ohio Department of Public Safety has received reports of scammers claiming to be from Ohio Homeland Security. Ohio residents have reported phone calls from these scammers informing them that their identity had been stolen. Caller ID on these calls indicate the calls originated from the OHS main line, 614-387-6171, but they did not. The Ohio Homeland Security main line was spoofed. Spoofing is when a caller deliberately falsifies information transmitted to your caller ID display to disguise their identity. If you receive these calls, don't fall for this scam, said Brian Quinn, Ohio Homeland Security Executive Director. Hang up immediately and report it to local law enforcement or the Statewide Terrorism and Crime Center at 877-647-4683. Ohio Homeland Security does not investigate personal identity theft and would not make these kinds of phone calls to Ohio residents, according to the news release. Tips to protect yourself from phone scams include Register your phone number with the National Do Not Call Registry. Be wary of callers claiming that you've won a prize or vacation package. Hang up on suspicious phone calls. Be cautious of caller ID. Hand sanitizer recall. Global Sanitizers is voluntarily recalling medically-minded hand sanitizer, lot numbers E2-1-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
0820 and E082020. It is an eight and a half ounce bottle with a blue and white label. Methanol, wood alcohol, was detected in the samples manufactured in Mexico. To date, Global Sanitizers has not received reports of any adverse effects related to the recall. Please stop using the products, if you have it, and discard it. The FDA is aware of this recall. Adverse reactions can be reported to 1-800-332-1088 to request a reporting form and return it to the address on the pre-addressed form. Masks available. Do you need a mask? We can help. We can provide Rilk customers and other people with disabilities with a pack of masks. Just call the Rilk office at 330-372-3325 and request a pack. Leave a message with your name and address if the call goes to voicemail. 6. Transportation Changes to Warren's 72 Southwest Route coming March 1st. Starting March 1st, there will be a change to the route the inbound 72 Southwest bus in Warren will follow. The change does not affect the times for 72 Southwest's schedule, but the route the bus follows will be different. The inbound bus will no longer travel along Todd Avenue, 4th Street, and Main Street, but will instead continue east on Market Street and South Street Southwest before turning left on Main Avenue Southwest. As of March 1st, the 72 Southwest inbound route from the Trumbull Plaza will be continue to second driveway, left at end of driveway, continue to Southern Boulevard Northwest, left on Southern Boulevard Northwest, left on Market Street, continue on South Street Southwest, left on Main Avenue Southwest, right on High Street Northeast to Park Avenue to the end of the line. 7. Calendar Items for March March is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month, Developmental Disabilities Month, and Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. March 1st, International Wheelchair Day. March 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th, Goal Setting Virtual Classes at 1 p.m. on Google Meet. Join the class by phone at 269-804-3948. PIN number to join is 234-018-362, followed by a pound. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. March 20th, first day of spring. March 28th, Palm Sunday. Thank you for taking the time out for our newsletter. Western Reserve ILC is a local 501c3 nonprofit agency serving the needs of persons with disabilities in Astrobula, Columbiana, Mahoning, and Trumbull counties. We are a community based, non residential agency whose core services are free. If you would like to receive a Braille, email, or audio copy of this newsletter each month, please contact us to find out more about becoming a Rilk consumer. You can call us at 330-372-3325.